Welcome to Light Sun Church. We are the body of Jesus Christ gathering in Nairobi Umoja One Estate. Our services are every Sunday morning with prayers from 8 a.m., Bible study 9 a.m., and a worship service at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you. Light Sun Church, spiritually transform people. Exalt his mighty name forever.
we exalt your holy name higher. We sing glory to you, Jesus. How we love you, Lord. How we worship you. Exalting your holy name on high, oh God. Your name is beautiful, Jesus. Lord, we look unto you this morning. With our hearts lifted high, oh God. We raise our voices.
reign on high, Lord.
partnership with God. When we worship Him with what He has blessed us with, we make possible the expansion of His kingdom in our community. 2 Corinthians 9.11, we will be enriched in every way to be generous on every occasion, and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. At Lights and Church, we give in the spirit of generosity to God. There is nothing we need He has withheld from us. You can participate with us right now in worshiping God through your substances. This is possible through our Lipa 9 Pesa by Goods account number 590631. Thank you for your generosity. Hey guys, how are you? Thank you again for joining us here at Lifestyle Church. Today's Thursday, our 84th day of Step Up. We, have, we are only left with six days. Wow, sometimes I thought that we will not finish, but we are coming to an end, we are coming to a close, and we just want to express our gratitude for people that have supported and have joined us during this period of fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. We, we 
started a journey into the book of Nehemiah from Nehemiah chapter 1 and this is our fifth week of just studying the book of Nehemiah and today we are in the, in the eighth chapter, eighth chapter of Nehemiah. If you are new here and you have not been with us for, for, for a long while, maybe it's your, it's your second time coming in, we are in the book of Nehemiah, this is our eighth chapter. If you have missed the other seven chapters, I will invite you to go back to our, come back to our page when you have time and just go through all the what we have been talking about because it's been a lot from chapter 1 to chapter 8. And just to make some, some uh, back, back, uh, going back a little bit so that we can all be together, it's, we are talking about a character that is called Nehemiah. Nehemiah the book of Nehemiah has one main character that, that, that the, the name means the comfort of Jehovah. Nehemiah simply means the comfort of Je Jehovah. And we say that this is a, a type of the Holy Spirit because when Jesus gets ready to leave the face of the earth, he leaves his disciples, he leaves you and me with a promise. And he says that I will send you another comforter. This comfort was good. This comforter was going to come to be with us. So when Nehemiah comes into the picture, he's the picture of the Holy Spirit. What does he come to do? He comes to repair the walls. We talked about the walls and we say that the walls represent our spiritual life, our spiritual life. You see, Jerusalem is a picture of a believer. And uh, if you read the book of Ezra, Ezra who also is a type of the Holy Spirit. Ezra simply means the Lord helps, the Lord helps, or the help of God, the help of Jehovah. So when the help of Jehovah, the, the Ezra comes in, he be rebuilds the temple, he rebuilds the temple. And the Bible says that we are the temple of of God. So when he comes in to rebuild, he rebuilds the temple. Then Nehemiah comes again to rebuild the walls that were around the temple because the, 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 the walls were broken down and the temple was exposed, which means that any attack could come from outside to affect the temple. Anything that could come out, there was no defense mechanism to defend any out outward aggression against the temple and when the whole when the when Nehemiah comes to rebuild the walls is is a picture of the holy spirit coming to rebuild the walls of our spiritual life and this wall simply means our thought life the bible says that be transformed by the renewal of your mind the holy spirit comes to transform us so that we can be like christ the bible says that let this mind be with you, be in you. That was also in Christ. He says that develop the mind of Christ. In other words, there is a, a mind, there is a wall that we have to develop around in our Christian walk that we have to be in a position to rebuild with the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It is the citizens of, of Jerusalem that were building this wall but they were building under the leadership and the help of Nehemiah, who is the type of the Holy Spirit. And in chapter 8, we are met by, by Nehemiah again. But Nehemiah, at this point, he has finished the rebuilding of the temple. He has finished the rebuild. And uh, it comes to a place where now there need for the people to hear the word, to, for them to hear the word. You, you remember... They have gone through so many obstacles. They have gone through the Sanballats and, and the Tobias. They have gone through the, 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 the resistance from within. And when they finish the rebuilding of the wall, now they can sit down and hear the word. Hallelujah. You will never come to a place where you, are, you, you will sit down to hear the word when you are distracted from things that are happening outside. It is until you finish, you allow the Holy Spirit to finish the construction or the rebuilding of the wall, the defense system, as Pastor Tim said last week, the defense system of the city, until you allow the Holy Spirit to do that, that is when you can sit down to hear the word. 
Hallelujah. That's when your spirit word, your spirit being, or, or your spiritual lives can be built through the word of God. Because now your defense systems are a lot. Your walls are complete. And when we read in chapter 8 from verse 1, the Bible says, And all the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate, right in the inside of the city. Now they, has, they have security. They can gather in the inside of the city. And at, the, at this moment, they were all as one man. One thing that Jesus prays for the church is that we may be one. We may be one. He says that I pray that they may be one as we are one. Talking to God the Father. There is the issue of oneness that God really holds dear to a believer, to a group of believers, to a group of people that are, are gearing towards one goal. These guys, their goal was to rebuild the temple, the, the, the walls of the, the, the city. Their, their goal was to rebuild the walls of the city. Now that they are done with rebuilding the walls, they can now sit down to hear the word of God. And it was an anticipated moment. It was a moment that these guys were looking forward to. Why? Because remember, these guys have been in, 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 in Babylon. They have been in Persia for 70 years. The stories that they are told about what happened, what God did through their, 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 their ancestors has been sung in their, in their earrings until they, 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 they've been asking themselves, were well, these stories true? Or, I, I can imagine for 70 years that there's a story that has been going around. And now they get a man, they meet a man who was a scribe. This guy was a priest. This guy was educated in the ways of the Torah. And when he comes, he comes to read to them the Torah. Remember the Torah were well, what is called the books of Moses. They were the first five books of the Bible. They are the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Five books that were authored by the man Moses. And when this guy sits down, or when, 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 they, in fact, they say that they, they set for him a stage that he stood above all the other people and he began to read the Torah. He began to read the Torah. And it's, it's important for us to come to a place where we know exactly what the Torah was all about. The Torah was not all about the people of Israel, as much as it involved them. But the Torah was all about God. It was all about God. The story of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, as much as it involves the creation of the people Israel, it was not about the people, but it was about the God of the people. Hallelujah. The Bible is never about you. The Bible is never about you. As much as we take the Bible as a book where we, we learn stuff, you learn how to live with your family through the Bible. You love, learn how to live with your wife through the Bible. You learn how to treat your elders through the Bible. You learn how to behave around the authority through the Bible. It is good. But that was not the main purpose for the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. The main purpose for the Bible it was not for you to learn how to live. The main purpose of this book is for us to know God. Hallelujah. It is through the avenue that is called the Bible that you and me can know God. We can know God through the Bible. We can learn God through the Bible by the help of the Spirit of God. There are people that have read the Bible as an intellectual book and uh, they, they, they can explain to you. They can explain to you what the Bible says, but without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, the, Bible's be the Bible becomes a book of rules and laws. And uh, it, it comes down to a book of, of the do's and don'ts. Do's and do's. 
Because the Holy Spirit comes to translate the Bible to us, to show us that the Bible is all about one man, and that is Jesus Christ. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is all about one man, Jesus Christ. I will repeat that again. It's important for you to know that from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is all about the revelation of one man, Jesus Christ. The prophets talked about him until he came on the face of the earth. He was the statement from God and he was God. And the Bible is all about the revelation of the one man, Jesus. Let that sink in a little bit. Because we have been taught otherwise. We've been taught that this word is, is for us to, to, to learn so many things. The Bible is all about the revelation of Jesus Christ. If, if I, I will not say anything else today, that will be the most important thing that you will come out of this Bible study with today. And you repeat it in your heart every day that the Bible is not about me. The Bible is about the revelation of the man, Jesus Christ. It's all about God. And when you study the Torah, Torah has three, 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 three things that it reveals about God. The, the, the first thing that you have to know about the Torah is that it talks about the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God. Sovereignty of God simply means that God, God is, 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 is a monotheism. It's, it's a monotheist. If, if the, that, that's the word. It's, 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 a, it's, it's God who is one. The Bible says, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. Sovereign God above everything. It's not that there are three. He's one God. Is one God, and is working in uh, in in uh, the, the, what what we call the Trinity. He is three in one: the God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son. God the Father is not God the Son. God the Son is not God of the Holy Spirit, but all of them are God. God, Hallelujah! All of them are God because He is sovereign. I know that sometimes we cannot understand the Trinity, but that's what makes God, God. <laughs> it says that the thoughts that I have, the, your thoughts are not measured to my thoughts. The thoughts of God are so high that even his personality cannot be understood until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The sovereignty of God. The supremacy of God is supreme over all. That is what it's, it means to be sovereign, to be sovereign. He's the sovereign ruler. He's the, he's the supreme ruler of the entire universe. He's the creator of everything that you do, uh, we, we, we see. And uh, the, the, the book or the, 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 the Torah simply shows or it explains God as the sovereign God, the creator of everything. The one who rules everything. The second thing that the Torah explains about God is, is the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. Last, uh, last week we were taught that faithfulness means being obedient towards the same direction. Being obedient towards one direction. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 24, verse 27, God gives a promise to Abraham. And that promise that is given to Abraham becomes the consistency of the Bible till the book of Revelation. The Bible is God being faithful to his promise to the end. That's why you are still called the sons of Abraham. That's why we we. We pray to the God of Isaac, uh, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because He is the God who is faithful to His word. 
every promise that God makes, God becomes faithful till the end. It doesn't matter what, what goes on in between, but he is obediently walking to the direction that he promised to the end. That is the faithfulness of God. That is being faithful. And uh, you, you have to keep that in your mind. Faithfulness simply means keeping or being obedient or going one direction, obediently going the same direction for a period of time. Hallelujah. The third thing that we have, the, 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 the Torah explains about God is the holiness of God. He is a holy God. He does not associate with sin. He does not associate with sin. Every time the children of Israel sins, God detaches himself from them because he cannot be associated with sin. And uh, it's important for us to come to a place where we, 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 we see in the book of, of, of Exodus about the holiness of God. God explains, if, in fact, when, when you go to the book of Leviticus, God puts these laws in place to show men that men cannot reach God without the help of God. Hallelujah. You cannot be holy without the, the holiness of God himself. You cannot be holy without Jesus Christ. You cannot be righteous without God. So the, the, this is what Ezra comes to do. Ezra comes to read for these guys those three things, the faithfulness of God, the sovereignty of God, and the holiness of God. All that was, 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 is what was included in the book of Torah, the first book, five books. And when, when the guys sit down, the Bible says that they are read to this, the Torah, they are read to to these books, the books of the Lord, they are read to for from morning until noon. It's important the audience of the people that, that Ezra was talking to, was reading to. The Bible says that there were men, women, and anyone else who could understand, <laughs> which means children were invited. If a child had reached the age of accountability where they could understand, they were invited in to hear. Hallelujah. Remember, these guys are just from exile. 70 years. This is their first sitting to hear the word of God. Remember those days there were no prints. There were no Bibles on, on, on iPad. There were no Bibles on on, 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 on your phones, there were no printing press where they could produce Bibles like us, like these available for us to read. The Bible, the, 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 the Torah, the books of the laws were only found with the scribes. So when this scribe called Ezra comes in, they make for him a platform where he could stand above all the other people. And he begins to read. He reads the Bible for around seven hours. And when he finishes the reading, the reaction of the people is that they began to cry. They began to cry. They began to weep. They began to weep. They began to weep about the awesomeness of God, the greatness of God, the majesty, the power of God. They were being read to about the holiness of God, the sovereignty of God, and the faithfulness of God. That it doesn't matter how their forefathers went against God and, and, and sinned against him. God was steadfastly faithful to what he said. To what he said. And when, when uh, they begin to cry, Ezra calms them down. Ezra calms them down. And they prepare a feast. Through the reading of the word, they begin to learn of the things like the feasts of boots. They begin to practice what they were read for. And it happens that this was what, what uh, the Israelites called their, their new year. They began to celebrate. It was a new day, new day for them in their calendar. It was a new day and they were celebrating it. 
So they began to celebrate because the word of God brings liberation. It brings freedom. It brings freedom. When these guys realize they are God, they begin to worship him. They begin to go back to the way of the word. They begin to live according to what God purpose them to do in the first place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can we read about, what can we learn about Nehemiah in this chapter? If you read uh, chapter 6 verse 11, Nehemiah says that he cannot enter into the temple. And when it comes to a place where he has finished his part, he has finished the building of the, of the walls, he calls Ezra in to come and help him in reading or re-establishing the law of God. Hallelujah. In ministry, you have to have a team of people that you believe in, a people that can come in and help you in some time. Some, 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 some people that sometimes when, when, when there are, there are are areas that you are, not, you are not confident with. Hallelujah. If you are in business, you are in ministry, you are a, a father, don't, don't be afraid to call in people to help you. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid to call in the help of Jehovah. Nehemiah means the help of Jehovah. Ezra comes to a place where he has to need the help. He has to need the help. And when the help comes, the help comes to explain or to read the Torah to him. Nehemiah being a layman, he was just a, a cupbearer to a king. Maybe he had never even read the Torah himself. But there was a man who had gone through the training. He had read the Torah. He had crammed. In fact, for those years, for those days, for you to become a scribe, and a priest, you had to master the Torah. You had to cry, cram the Torah in your head. You had to be in a way, in a place where you can narrate the Torah. You can narrate the Torah. Remember when, when, when Philip, when Philip is, uh, is, is, is about to be stoned, what he was doing, he was narrating the Torah. He was telling these people what happened in the first, in those Five books. That is where the gospel is. If it's not in the Torah, it is not in the Bible. The redemption of man, the picture of the redemption of man is in the Torah. The Torah will tell you about the faithfulness of God, that God is so faithful that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That is the faithfulness of God. That a friend that, that he will lay his life for his friend. That is the faithfulness of God. That is the faithfulness of God. The sovereignty of God is that he is God alone. It doesn't matter who you are. There is only one way to God. Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the only way. He is the sovereign one that can lead us. To God. Hallelujah. He's the sovereign God. He's the one that can lead us to God. And uh, he's also holy. They discover that he's holy. Holy. He was he went to the to the to the to the cross yet without sin. He went to that cross bearing the sin of the universe, bearing your sins and my sins, bearing the sins. He became sin so that you can be the righteousness of God. So that in front of God, at that moment when he was on the cross, at that moment, God so seen on Jesus, but saw the holiness of God on you. Because remember, Jesus is God. Jesus, on the face of the earth, Jesus was God, the sovereign God, the holy God, the faithful God. So when God sees him, he sees your sin, but when he sees me, he sees his righteousness, his holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the beauty of God. That is the beauty of this book. 
that's the beauty of this book, that we are able to come to a place where we know. When, when you meet the God of the Bible, you begin to weep. You will begin to weep. I, 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 we, have, we have ever preached to people and you find them just bursting into tears. Why? Because they are meeting the God of the Bible. How are you reading your Bible? Are you reading your Bible just to get wisdom, to get the nice stories? Jesus was a, a perfect, a great storyteller. Sometimes I just read the word to, to just get the stories. But why do you read? Do you read the Bible to get the stories or to meet God? The reason why God chose to reveal himself through this book. I, I believe in dreams. I believe in visions. I believe in all that. But the only place that God chose to reveal himself is through the pages of this book. If the dreams that you are dreaming, dreaming does not line up to the word of God, then it is not from God. The dreams that you are dreaming has to line up to the word of God. If it's from God, it will line up to the word of God. Because remember, God is faithful. He has chattered that this is the course, this is the line that I'm going to walk towards. And he walks towards that line to the very end. And God is going to walk with us at light, as, as Lightstone Church. As believers who believe in Jesus Christ, God is going to walk with us. Because we have met a God who is sovereign, we have met a God who is faithful, and we have met a God who is holy. If you have not met him, Jesus is, is able to save you. He is able to reveal himself to you like the God of the Bible. When these people learn about God, they begin to even celebrate the feasts. They begin to celebrate the feast. There are things that you cannot celebrate if you don't know Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to reveal himself to you through his word. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the people who are watching today, that, Lord, you will reveal yourself through the word, through the word of God, in the name of Jesus. Touch their lives. The sick, we command every sickness to leave your body. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of infirmity, we command it to live right now in Jesus' name. Lightstone Church, we are celebrating our second year. And just like Nehemiah did, Nehemiah invited Ezra in to come and help in, in, in reading the Torah. We have invited great men, men that we have interacted with, men that uh, are men of integrity and men that love the Lord Jesus Christ. Their love, what, what draws us to them is their love and their passion for Jesus Christ. And these, these men are going to be with us from Sunday. Sunday we are, we are going to be doing an online, online, online uh, conference and we have invited these men to be with us. You joining us here, you will be receiving from some of the best in this land in Africa, all, all overseas. And, and, and these guys, their spirits are sweet. Their spirits, they, they are men that carry the spirit of God. And when they come here to speak to us, we, we are open to listen. We are open to listen. Just like these guys were attentive to listen, we invite you to be attentive, to listen to what God is telling you. We believe that God will step you up. We believe that God will step you up. The last rest six days that we are left with, God will lift you up. Because remember, he's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. What he has said for, to you, what he has promised you, he will hold it faithfully until the end. Hallelujah. These guys are coming in not because we, when, when we present the gospel, we present the gospel by the help of the Holy Spirit. And it is your work as a believer to receive and to act on the word. So we encourage the old body, the, 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 the family of Lyston Church, that as we receive this word, let's receive the word and act 
on the word of God. Where the, there is prophecy, let's, re, let's claim the prophecies in our lives. Hallelujah. Some, some of these men have graces in their lives that this church desire to tap into. So let's, let's invite these guys with open hearts. Receive the word. That is a very, very important and vital thing that you have to do. Just like these guys receive the word, receive the word. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today. We, we will meet you again on Sunday. Remember on Sunday we have three sessions because it's the day one of our conference. We have the morning session at 10 a.m. We have the afternoon session at 3 p.m. And we have the evening session or the night session at 8 p.m. Invite a friend and tell your friend to invite another friend. And let's, let's just fellowship. Thank you and may God bless you.